the Canadian High Arctic, one of the world's last great wildernesses and one of the most hostile places on Earth. For eight young adventurers won through from 9,000 applicants to come here on an environmental mission to help polar bears. Week one and the team are in serious training. They've just spent their first night camping out in the wild. It was unbelievably cold with temperatures below minus 40. It was horrible. I woke up about eight times in the night, so I didn't get much sleep either. I hated it, really. Everyone wants to get back to the relative comfort of base camp. You're looking forward now to getting back to our nice big tent. Yeah. yeah. We can dry all our stuff. Excellent. Well, we're not going straight there. We're going to go and practice the navigation we've been learning this week. Oh, okay. We have buried somewhere in the ice oh. a bag of very nice goodies for lunch. Oh, it's oh cookies and sweets. Oh! So the point you need to get to is two, three, six, six, five. When they go on their main expedition, map reading skills will be essential and Lewis is feeling confident. We know where we're going and we've got the bearing, so I reckon we'll be about an hour till we eat, I'm hoping. But they barely started when they need to stop. Sorry everyone, one minute. Emily's having trouble with her goggles. I hate this stupid outfit. I just feel really claustrophobic in this. It's like I can hardly even breathe. It's that for your benefit, all right? It's minus 19 Celsius, but with wind chill, feels like minus 35. Frostbite is a real danger. I'm not risking getting frostbite or something because I'm claustrophobic. Right, let me come on. The team have got to learn fast to cope with these conditions. At the end of this week's training, they'll set off on a 100-mile dog sled journey to a remote glacier, where they'll do vital research into global warming. It's going to be the toughest journey of their lives. Right, we've watched. So you reckon we should go down there, yeah? Matt yeah. thinks we should go down there. To tell the truth, I think we should... Teamwork go. will be essential, but today, Fabian feels like no-one's taking any notice of him. Louis? Louis? Shush, baby, for one sec, yeah? Sorry. I haven't been kind of putting much input in it now because people are just not listening to my ideas. No yeah, OK, 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 go! Yeah, I don't mind, just follow. Yeah. After two hard hours of trekking, the terrain starts to get much icier. Right, this is ice, that's ice. Ah! <laughs> and pulling uphill in soft snow makes it even harder. Oh, Hold them no, going to be no. so tough getting our sleighs over this well, bit of snow. No way! When you get into the deep snow, your legs keep sinking, um, and that's a bit annoying. They're running out of energy fast. Getting a bit hungry, I just want to find it now, just find our prize. I think we're close by and I just can't wait till I get the food because I'm absolutely starving. Everyone keep their eye out because we reckon we're really near the place now. Oh, look! Guys, remember it's buried, yeah? Oh, I got it, I got it. Three hours after setting off, they're finally eating lunch. <laughs> it was hard, but when you've got cookies in your hand, you don't really care. <laughs> but the exercise has shown a few cracks in the team. Fabian was lazy again today. He finds any excuse to not do something. Apparently I was lazy, but I didn't feel like I was lazy. He kept taking everyone else's ideas and just using them and pretending that he thought of it himself. I think we'll start here. I've said that about five minutes ago when yeah, we stopped. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you just repeat them. But it's only been like two or three days since I'm 13. People think, oh, he's 13. He has to do loads and loads and loads of stuff. The thing is, I'm still the same person. People have just been expecting way more of me. Next morning, an amazing opportunity comes up. The chance for one of the team to help scientists with a survey of rare whales. 
Matt is lucky enough to be chosen. I've never seen the whale before and I can't wait if, to spot some. Just take, take part in this project, it's just a, a wonderful feeling. He'll be searching for highly endangered bowhead whales, hunted for hundreds of years till they almost became extinct. Now they're protected and scientists want to find out if numbers are increasing. Matt will be working with biologist Karen Ditz. We'll be following this ice edge all the way down and you make a note on your uh, booklet oh, and then you do all your, your counting and descriptions yeah. of all the whales that yeah. you see. Bowhead whales are only found in the Arctic and spotting so few in such a vast area isn't going to be easy. I can't see any. Oh, you're just going to get a glimpse yeah. sometimes? An hour into the search and they haven't seen a thing. It's always disappointing, but it's not unusual either because they live in such a huge area. Sometimes it's difficult to predict where they are. I am a, a bit disappointed that I haven't seen one yet, so uh, I'll keep looking and hopefully I'll see one before the end. Down on the ice, expedition leader Ben has a challenging training exercise for the rest of the group. We've spent basically a night out on the snow in a tent. We're now going to do it the true traditional way tonight and we're going to stay out in an igloo. But you guys are going to be building your own igloos. The first job is block cutting. <laughs> and they soon find it's very hard work. It's really quite difficult because it seems to get stuck about there. Uh -huh. Look at this. Look at this, guys. That took us roughly about 10 minutes. All right, if we need 20 or 30 of those, we're going to have to start getting our block cutting skills a bit slicker. It's more exciting than a tent because you can put a tent up anywhere, but you can't exactly put an igloo up in your back garden unless you live in the Arctic. So. <laughs> up in the air, Matt's still not spotted any whales. I've just got to keep looking and hope for the best. Time is starting to run out, but Karen's still hopeful. We've uh, had lots of reports that they're at the flow edge of Cumberland Sound fairly frequently. And suddenly, Matt spots something. There's one. It's down there. Oh, this is amazing. sitting there real still and then the water came out this bit stuck funnel on the top of it really clear and had white spots you see them there after the disappointing start they're incredibly lucky i've seen three now yeah did you see the white on the chin yeah i've noted those down and they were just amazing to see and they're just massive the surveys proved very worthwhile and very exciting too it was just spectacular to watch them for that split second before they disappear, and I absolutely loved it. Back at the igloo building, some of the girls are having doubts about the night ahead. At first, I was like all up for it until I heard that it could collapse. They told us that they'd be um, putting in a shovel so we could dig our way out. That kind of put me off. So I was like, uh, right, okay, so the whole thing could collapse on us in the night. Emma said that it'll be warmer than it would be sleeping in a tent, and I suppose if there's all the girls are in there, then it'll be all right. Building igloos is quite an art, locking the blocks of snow together so they don't collapse. These blocks are not shaped before you've actually put them in place. You put them in place and then you actually cut the spiral in. You then gradually build up the layers all the way around. Right. Save by the knee, because I was right there. <laughs> how are we doing, team? Right, right, only another how many to go? For now, how many to go? Right, team. <laughs> With help from local experts, the team complete two small igloos. Hey, hey, hey. Yay! <laughs> but now it's time to go it alone. 
Now this is going to be a big one. It's going to be twice the size, if not bigger, than the one that we've just finished. We've got four hours before it gets dark to finish this one off. Uh, we're not really that sure about how to build it, but I don't really want to be the one responsible if it all goes wrong. Sometimes it's a bit annoying when you're lifting it up and it cracks in the middle and you just don't get a break. The wind starts to get up, lowering the temperature once more to around minus 40. It's not touching enough. The extreme cold adds to the stress. It's not it's the cold, that is it. Come, calm down. Let's try and just reshape it. That's sturdy. It isn't. That is. That's... No. No, it's not. We're always getting the angle wrong, and so um, all the blocks keep falling in. This one's Ow. dodgy. This the one we're putting on is wonky. Nice. We're actually sleeping in it tonight, which is a bit scary because all the sides keep looking like they're going to cave in. Yeah. Oh. No <laughs> they're struggling. We had a lot of help before, and it is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle trying to get the, the different blocks to, to interlink. This one's unstable. That's where it's all gone wrong, from there. Oh. You've got joint, 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 yeah? Should be overlapping, so it locks onto the next block. So it needs to read it from there onwards. Oh, no. okay. Too cold. And we've had to go back and um, redo it all. So that is kind of a bit depressing to think that we're, yeah, we're that. just basically doing just what we've done block. before. Well, we have three hours left until the sun goes down, and when the sun goes down, you, you can't do anything. I just want it up, really, so we can get dinner started and get to bed. But while some are working hard, not everyone's Adam. pulling their weight. Adam, Adam, what are you doing? Stand around watching it, so it's not going to fall off on its own. I'm not actually doing much good out here because um, I don't think I'm helping because I'm quite cold. And the bitter weather's getting to others too. It seems like it's us four, you know. Where the hell is the world? Where's Jen, Adam, Fabian? Half the team have gone to their tent to shelter from the strong wind. Emily and Courtney aren't impressed. I told them, we need some help. What do you? Oh, really? Oh, really? I didn't realise you had help I, with I thought you could build and make it on your own. We've been out on the land all day, so it's absolutely freezing. And it's not as if we can just, like, sit down now and, like, warm ourselves up. I don't think they realise that this is kind of getting a bit serious. It's getting a bit late. We're all cold and, you know, we need to sleep in this. Nice. You know, it's hard enough building igloo, nice. but, you know, four teenagers yeah. building igloos, you know. Just a little bit harder. Ben calls the group together. OK, how do we reckon it's going, guys? Rubbish. Why? So it's going quite good. It's taken us about two hours to, and we haven't even made, like, two layers. Yeah. Why don't we break it down and basically have three people, actually, on the igloo itself, yeah. and the rest can go and warm up. This is very serious. This has got to get done by last light, all right? We've got two hours to nail this, and at the moment, it ain't going to happen. Not much. <laughs> they start to work in shifts, but Fabian's unhappy, feeling the group aren't being fair to him. He confides in his teammate, Emily. This is the way that I'm being treated. I'm not being listened to. I'm not having my views heard. I'm trying, and then I just get put down. That's it. Just say, if you're, you're all my friends and you should be helping me and say I'm having a hard time at the moment. And it's not just Fabian who's down in the dumps. The igloo building still isn't going well. It's not getting there at all. Oh. Look at it. It's fine. But it's not though. Re... Look at it. It's rubbish. We just need to redo those two there. It's taking ages. And we just keep going and going. There's just problems along the way. It's just slowing us down and down and down. It's like taking forever. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Stupid. An hour to sunset, there's depressing news for the team. Ben decides the weather's become too cold to keep going safely and work has to be abandoned. I'm sat out here in a half-made igloo. Note half-made. Spent about four hours trying to build a um, igloo. Failed miserably, so, you know, kind of a whole day wasted. It just feels like we've all worked our butts off for nothing. For some, like Alex, it's all getting too much. 
It's so difficult, you don't understand. We slaved away for nearly five hours today to make like half an igloo and we've not had any tea. We're so fed up. I just hating this so bad. So bad. This is tough. This is really, really tough. I just can't stop thinking about my mum and dad and how much I miss them and I'm finding it really, really difficult. With morale at an all-time low, leaders Ben and Emma arrange for a very special delivery from the local town. We have supper for you. Right? What do we have? You all right, guys? Pizza and... <laughs> Oh, that was the best pizza. I don't think I'll ever, ever appreciate that as much as I did then. It wasn't even great pizza, it just tasted like heaven. Spirits are further lifted by some extraordinary local entertainment, throat singing. It's an ancient Inuit tradition where the throats used to make sounds. The Inuit singers were just brilliant. I loved them. They imitate the sounds around them, like the natural sounds, and they were so excellent, I'm telling you. You can't tell which person's doing the, the high bit or the low bit. You're stunned, you can't say anything, because it's just so good. You know, it, good isn't good enough. Excellent, it was perfect. <laughs> oh, that was really good. With two small igloos completed, there's room for some of the team to sleep in them if they want. It's a tough decision. I'm going to sleep in an igloo tonight. I'm going to try it out because I know I'm going to so regret it if I didn't, didn't do it. Jenny, Lynn and Courtney, I think, want to sleep in an igloo, but me and Alex really don't because we're just too cold. Before bed, Emma gives Fabian a bit of a pep talk. You have been working hard. I've seen you. So they say to you, oh, you haven't been working hard enough. You turn around and you say, no, actually, I've been working really, really hard. And so you need to make sure they know that. And once inside the igloo, the boys admit Fab's taken a lot of stick. Adam even has a confession. I know that I'm really lazy and I just, like, spend most of the time in my tent. I feel a bit victimised because um, um, when I pull my weight, yeah, no one says anything. <laughs> and then I have a break and then I'm the person who's slacking off the person He's not doing anything. I think it's a bit sly on Fabian, because they're all saying, Fabian, you're lazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting off like, ah, oh, it's a life. Hey, Somehow always Adam always me, misses I getting shouted at. I, I think it's because you're the littlest, yeah, and like, I'm everyone thinks you're really cute. Person ever. After such a hard day, they find the igloo surprisingly cosy. It is a lot warmer than the tent. I'm shivering, saying warmer, which sounds really weird, but with a tent, the wind comes through. I just hope you don't drip on my head. I hope you don't melt. She's worried that it might crash down on her. Aren't you? She's very, very tired. It was probably one of the best nights sleep I've had here so far. I'm a bit tired, but I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm always tired. After a day in the wild, the team are relieved to get back to base camp. Their large sub-zero tent suddenly seems like five-star accommodation. Yes. It's much, much better in here. It's nice and warm, but this is, like, luxury to so what we had from out there. Yeah. I know it sounds silly, because we've only been here a few days, but it feels, it feels like home. That one's there. But they won't be here for much longer. Tomorrow, the main expedition begins, and they'll be living and working out in the wilderness for two weeks. This morning, leader Emma is taking Lewis and Alex on a flight over the expedition route, more than 100 miles across some of the harshest terrain in the world. Uh, we're going to be working down the, towards the Grinnell Glacier. It's a chance to check out how difficult the journey will be for the dog sleds. Go up a really narrow gully and then head down the valley system and take exactly the route we're going to take with the dogs. Do you think they'll okay with the dogs then? I reckon they'll be all right on the sea ice, but 
getting up all this land is going to be tough. Yeah. We're going to have to help them a lot and push the sledge quite a lot. Yeah. They'll be far from civilization. If anything goes wrong, everyone will need to know what to do. So back on the ground, Ben has organised a search and rescue for their final training exercise. Got a bit of a, a, a situation on our hands. This is um, Constable Chris Coles from the police detachment in Callowit. I don't know what you guys had planned for this morning, but we need you, we need a bit of help. Um, we got a call last night that we had a couple of reported missing on a skidoo. We have a search and rescue unit. I've asked Ben if I can borrow you guys and him and the skidoos to cover the sea ice. The team are led to believe it's a real emergency. We're just at the head of this chain of islands running down here, so our, our main access to look at is going to be the right-hand side. Yeah. All right, so you want to be looking that way. Okay, over that way. They work as spotters, looking for any sign of the lost snowmobile drivers. Being stranded in such low temperatures would be very dangerous. Fabian signals to the rest of the team to stop as Emily seen something. Where? Do you know what I mean? Just there, there's things that stood up. Where? I found them! They're coming! How's have we got any spare? Have we got a down jacket? Spare down jacket. We found the two casualties on the skidoo. With the situation yeah. under control, Ben decides it's time to put them in the picture. Fantastic, Emily. Well spotted, all right? This is a training exercise, OK? No way! I Just told sort of... you, didn't I? The point of this was is that this is how they do it for real, all right? We were genuinely concerned, and um, it made us look out more as well because we, we actually thought that someone's life was at risk. It could happen, so it's best to, it's best to get us trained, so... We know what to do in a real situation. It's been an impressive performance to complete their training. We do search and rescues probably at least once a month. So what you went through is exactly what, what we do. We get people in the area to go out and help us because we have an awful lot of ground to cover. So you guys did a bang-up job. Meanwhile, up in the sky, Emma, Alex and Lewis have reached their breathtaking final destination. So what we're flying over now is the glacier. This is the end point of our whole trip. And what we're going to do is come out here and measure how much the ice has changed. It just looks like it goes on forever. It's enormous. It's 15 kilometres long. So it's a massive distance for us to be covering. The flight has brought home just how testing the expedition will be. It's making me think that it's going to be quite tough getting there in just a week. I'm a little bit nervous but I'm just really excited, looking forward to what we're doing when we set off tomorrow. It's going to be really challenging, and I don't think anyone is quite prepared for what's up ahead. Do, 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 do.